Hi everyone, have you ever wondered what impacts appraisals and what's happening in our shifting market? My name is Kate Westerlin, I'm a loan officer, and I'm here to shed some transparency in and around what's happening in this market. I have an amazing appraisal reviewer, Russ Kremen, here to really help give some color um, to this topic. He is a wealth of knowledge. Russ, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're um, and let's just dive in. So can you share with us how are appraisals impacted in the shifting market? We know that the market is completely different from earlier this year until now. Um, honestly, the, it's even though things are shifting around, the appraisals themselves don't change. Whether we're in an increasing market, whether in a stable market, or we're in a declining market, we're, we're still doing everything the same. We're still going off whatever knowledge is available for that area. Um, we're going off of you know any information we can get from the realtors, any information we can get from public records, um, our own individual inspections, everything like that. Um, and that's the good thing. That's the good thing that even though if a market changes, the appraisal process itself doesn't change. It really doesn't. Like you know, you may need a little bit more if the if a market changes to a downward side. You may need some additional information, but other than that, it's that's the beauty part of it. It doesn't really change per se. Even yeah, with their, even with the turbulence, so of the systematic. Market. Yeah, um, and like anything else, like if you're looking at an appraisal, um, and you know, let's just use an example when the market was really going high, going crazy, going up 10, 15, 20 percent. There was only one line to address that. It was a data sales sediment line, and you may make an adjustment based upon your market data, and that was it. Everything else still the same. Whether, like I said, whether you're going into declining market. Increasing market, everything's the same. It's just that's one small part of an appraisal. Um, so I mean, it does make things easier. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't change the process by any means, but it does. It's just one, one, one other factor just to determine, you know, what is your, what is your property worth? Yeah, and tell us, you know, what is the value of an appraisal? Can you just kind of briefly share why we do them and why they're required? Um, for the most part, an appraisal is just simply it's a snapshot of what your home is worth. On that particular day, um, you know, your home could be worth more a month from now. It could be worth less and worth the same. It all depends on what what's happened in that market. Um, and from a lending standpoint, you know, we want to know what is your home worth? You know, if we're willing to, you know, you want to buy a home, say for $250,000, we want to know, okay, we're going to loan, loan you the money for the buy this particular home. You know, we want to be Sure, you know, what is the what is the what's the market worth for this house? Like if we had to, unfortunately, if we had to take the home back for some reason, we had to sell it, you know, what could we what would be a reasonable price to sell it for? Um and oftentimes, I mean, that value can, you know, it's pretty steady for the most part. I mean, it's not you're not gonna have it where, okay, I it's worth three hundred thousand on Tuesday and all of a sudden tomorrow it's worth a hundred thousand. I mean, that just doesn't it doesn't happen like that. It's just, it's like a steady growth, either like steady or increasing growth or downward. Um, and that's really all this. It's just, it's just a matter of trying to figure out, okay, as of this particular day, you know, what is a reasonable value for my home? Yeah. Um, and appraisals really are such a safeguard and they're designed for both the lender and the buyer. So the yeah. lender, of course, God forbid, if you default on your mortgage, they want to ensure that they can recoup their investment. And for the buyer, you have an understanding of what the home's value is as you, know, as you are going through the process of being under contract. Um, and we can talk about strategies if the you know, property were to under appraise. Um, ideally, we want it to appraise at value. So, um, you know, Russ, can you give us an idea and share briefly what is an appraiser taking into consideration when they do their assessment? Everything. So we're looking at, say I've, re I've received an appraisal assignment. I'm going to do, we'll, we'll keep a nice, simple townhouse in a um, regular townhouse community. We have lots of sales. So we'll typically look at okay, my my particular house. I have I have an end unit. I have three bedrooms. I have two and a half baths above grade. I have a finished basement. So as an appraiser, I'm going to try and find the most similar sales that I can to that particular property, and then compare them, whatever amenities or things or size, condition, compare that to the subject. Either you know it could either be superior to the subject or it could be inferior. We're going to make adjustments up and down. But from an appraisal standpoint, we're really trying to find similar homes that have sold that we can kind of compare kind of like apples to apples. Um, now, townhouse is an easy one. Townhouse and the condos are easy because usually you're going to have a lot of sales like that. 
It's when you get into the more complex properties where there might be a limited amount of sales, or you might be in a rural area where sales are kind of, they're expanded out. You might have to go four or five miles, six miles, something like that to find your comps. But really in the end, we're kind of, best case scenario is to have comps that you have the fewest amount of adjustments for. Um, you know, we don't always get lucky like that, especially like I said, if we're a complex house or a house that's, you know, kind of out, you know, out in a rural area, stuff like that, like you're just not going to get that lucky. Um, but I mean, we're, as an appraiser, we're really looking for, okay, if, you know, if, well, really as a buyer, like, okay, if I couldn't get this home, you know, I really want this home, but I can't get it. If I want a, a very reasonable substitute for it, where would I go to? What would I look for? Would I look for a house that's a similar location, a similar neighborhood, maybe puts me in a certain school district? Um, if I really want a waterfront house, you know, am I going to look at a house that's not a waterfront? Probably not. Like you're, I'm certain things you're looking for as a buyer. And we're doing the same thing as, a, as an appraiser. We're looking at, you know, what are the similarities to this house? If I couldn't get this house here, where where would I more likely most likely go to to find a house that's similar to it? Um, and for the most part, I mean, it's you're going to have sales depending where you're at. You know, like I said, you may some areas that have some issues with them uh, as far as limited amount of sales, you know, very little turnover. Um, and at least the good thing is now with the amount of data that we have access to, it makes things so much easier to be able to find certain things. Um, but I mean, that's that's usually the thing. We're just trying to give an you know give an estimate. And that's the thing too. It's like as an appraisal, it's not an exact science. By any means, you're just you're using your market knowledge. You're using what's sold to make an, an basically an educated guess or assumption to say this is what your home is worth based upon all these different factors. Um, and from an appraisal, you can have five appraisers look at the same property and have five different values. Um, you know, they could be a little bit different. They could be a lot different. But like I said, it's just it, it's what a particular appraiser sees, what the data they have. And what their interpretation of that data is. Um, you know, for townhouse community, it's, you're not going to have a huge, you're not going to have, you know, four appraisers say, okay, it's worth 300. Another one say, no, it's worth 360. That's usually not going to happen. When you get those kind of more complex properties, and that's when you kind of get a, a, a different array of values a lot of times. Yeah. And it's very similar to what realtors do, <clears throat> excuse me, when they are, you know, guiding buyers on pricing strategy, mm -hmm. you know, they're looking at what has recently sold. They're looking at the data and communities that have a higher turnover rate. Of course, they're going to have much more recent and updated information. So it's going to make, you know, just determining what that fair value is much easier. Yes. Um, and I would assume that's, you know, the same of how appraisers look at it. And, you know, to your point with the complex properties it's amazing how technology and data collection has progressed and how we can you know we have more information now than ever before to ensure more accuracy um and i have you know i have clients sometimes say well kate gosh like my appraisal came in a thousand dollars under is this worth it is you know is it worth it for me to purchase this property and move forward with my contract and to your point i say you know there could be a lot of different value opinions mm -hmm. um and that's where i encourage them to let's look at your financial scope let's look at your goals and let's discuss it with your realtor because your realtor should be hyper local they should have an understanding of that market um and really be able to help you understand that so um that's for another time um but Russ, tell us you know what is the biggest misconception in and around appraisals that you see um i would say two things the first would be that um your home is worth what it sells for i know that sounds very strange but you know using uh you know using analogy before with a with a townhouse so you have a townhouse that's under contract for three hundred thousand but it only appraises for 280. Now that transaction may still go through, but the buyer may have to come up with an extra $20,000 to, to fill that gap. Whereas we've seen ones on the opposite end where it sells for 300, but it appraises for 320. So just because your house sold for 300, it could be worth more, it could be worth less. It just happens to be that's what the particular parameters were of that sale. Um, and you know, oftentimes it's, you know, we'll see ones that'll come in actually higher than, than a contract price. It happens a lot, especially when, um, when prices were really going up at a, a very quick pace, 
you know, we may see something that came in, okay, I'm under contract for, you know, 350, but it actually appraised for 365. In reality, a house is worth probably 365. It's not probably worth the 350 that you're under contract for, but that's just, you know, just the way it is. Um, the other big misconception that we see as far as trying to value properties is a, a price per square footage breakdown. You know, we'll see that a lot where, you know, say a home sells for 500,000, they have, you know, 2,000 square feet. Well, that figure is only based upon that sale price of 500,000 and that above grade square footage of 2,000. Doesn't take into account, you know, how big the land, you know, how big your acreage is. What kind of amenities do you have? Um, where is your property located? It doesn't take any of that into effect. So, you know, if I'm looking at it as a perspective, okay, you know, my neighbor's house, you know, sold for this, you know, the price for square footage is, you know, 250. Well, if my house is, you know, 3,000 square feet, I'm going off 250. My house must be worth you know, 750 or trying to do the math on the fly. I'm sorry, 700 for that. And that's not, that's not always how it works. I mean, you know, for a townhouse, maybe a condo, okay, you're going to be much more closer in line with those. Um, but I mean, for the more regular, not so much complex property, but in larger properties where a house that's sitting on like three acres or a house that has a pool, a house that has is waterfront, like those figures are not, that's just, it's just not how an appraisal is done. Like an appraiser is not going to say, okay, this, you know, I'm going to do my breakdown based upon all these different measures because it only takes literally one line of the appraisal into effect. And that's just what your, what your square footage is above grade. That's how the adjustment's broken down one. Um, and, you know, we'll see, you know, a lot of times like a, like a home may be based upon that. And I think part of the reason for that is, especially over the last you know, five, 10 years, seeing a lot of shows on television saying, okay, all right, your house is, you know, 3,000 square feet. Let's, let's call it a thousand square feet per, you know, or a thousand dollars per square foot. We'll make it an even 3 million. Well, that house may not be worth 3 million. It may be worth less than that, maybe worth more than that, but they're just using a nice quick figure, do the adjustment. Okay, well, this is all based on that. Um, and a lot of times we find like doing that, if we do it a breakdown like that, a lot of times the homes are worth more than what that cost breakdown would be if you just did it simply that way. Um, or sometimes it's less. It's just, but that's that's the biggest thing that we see as far as praises go is that one of the biggest you know, questions as far as like a, if someone's doing a reconsideration of value. Property properties provided for sale for reconsideration a lot of times have that breakdown, and appraisers for the most part they they may comment about it about okay you know the price per square footage is a little different for these comps, but that there's no they don't put any stock into it because it could, because there's so many factors involved in that, and the price per square footage only breaks down one one line item of the whole appraisal. Yeah. And there's so much to consider. So, you know, when you are looking, you're going to, as a buyer, you receive a copy of your appraisal inspection report. I encourage you to review that with your realtor. And, you know, to Russ's point, when you put a bid in on a home, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's your appraised value. That's why an appraisal is done is to really determine what that value is. So ideally, you know, if you put an offer in at 450, we want your appraisal to come in at 450, but it could come in, you know, at 455 or 445. Um, and that's when we talk about different strategies. Now, if it comes in over what you offered, then we're going to happy dance and we're going to celebrate because that means that you have just earned earned instant equity, you have made a phenomenal investment and you should be so proud. If it comes in undervalued, there are a number of things that we could look at and consider. You know, there could be um, something where you renegotiate the sales price with the seller, uh, or maybe you come out of pocket a little bit, or maybe you meet halfway. Um, or again, as Russ mentioned, there's something called a reconsideration of value. It's basically appealing the appraisal if there was new data that we could consider. And that was that would be something that your realtor and I would discuss um, and submit. And the appraiser is required to give us a response um, so that we can understand if that is reconsidered or if it's not and why. And it could be something you know, as Russ mentioned, where it's just not apples to apples. It's, you know, one item on the appraisal report and we're not considering all, the, all of the other factors. So, you know, I encourage you to, if you have questions, let us know. We have an incredible, incredible team and appraisers here at First Home Mortgage. Russ, thank you so much for um, just kind of giving us some transparency in and around this topic. I so appreciate your time. Um, and again, if you guys have questions, my name is Kate Westerlin. I'm a loan officer with First Home Mortgage and have a good afternoon.
Thank you. Thank you.